Alright, so open up Jashaka, click on load, navigate to where your files are kept. For me, it's on the desktop, so I go to the desktop. I add in all my files, so it's a gunshot sound, the muzzle flash, and the raw footage. The muzzle flash was originally a PNG, which I created in GIMP. I have another video on YouTube to show that. The reason is because Shocker doesn't have any blending mode, so you need to use a PNG. Really easy. So as you see on the left hand side, there's kind of a selected thing. On the front, you see the desktop. The selected thing is always there on the side, so whenever whichever module you go into, you can always just drag and drop from that side, and for that reason, it's quite helpful. So click on the animation module. Right, now what you do is click on world to activate the world and drag across your raw footage. As you can tell I'm doing this retrospectively because my audio on it was really bad. Now click on add new layer. Here I accidentally added a brand new layer with my raw footage on it again. Don't need to do that because as I'll show you a later technique you can do it. It's a bit comp one of those things you just mess around with. So you can ignore this little bit of adding this new layer with my raw footage again, you don't actually need to do that. It's more for if you want to add effects to that base layer, which for some reason didn't work with my recording capture software, so I had to leave it out anyway. Create a new layer, add a new muzzle flare. As you can see, it's already composited on top, so there's no problems. So now if you go to the bottom, scrub through until we see our hits as you can see the video playback is quite slow partly because I've got a really bad laptop partly because I'm recording on Shocker and partly because Shocker itself is free so it's not going to be it's not exactly After Effects After Effects costs a thousand pounds so you expect it to be good this was free and was stopped delivering two years ago so if you click on controls, put your transparency back up, and you can see it's come back up. Now you can see there's all these values there for moving around, for uh, rotating, for scaling. So what you do is you scale it, you move it, you rotate it into position. It's quite simple. Then you click on the transparency button to 100% because that's the frame that you want it to appear. Then the frame before, you put that down to zero. Go forward two frames, i.e. the frame just after your flash, and go down to, and put your transparency down to zero. That way you've got one frame with your thingy on. You then repeat this for the entire number of times you're going to do this. So you're going to see me do this for three things. I've, this is a 13 second long shot, however I'm actually going to show you a quick way of cutting it down to five seconds as well, because I can't really bother to go through all 13 seconds. A lot of it is down to acting and I have to admit I've never shot a gun, so I don't know what it should be like, so it's a bit dodge the way I've shot the guns. And it, it's a bit slow. I don't get like if you look, people like are really fast with their triggers. On I don't do that stuff, so I don't know. Which makes it a bit harder to find out exactly where you're gonna shoot, and that's why it looks a bit off. But uh, hey ho, that's down to me rather than the actual program. So as you can see again, I'm just scrubbing through, looking at where the flash is, and using that. As you can see up there, there are buttons for going through frame by frame, for going through or going through to the end. On the side there where I'm clicking, that's a keyframe plus button, which is add a keyframe, keyframe minus button, which is delete a keyframe, and the frames on the buttons either side are. When you've got that layer selected, and you use those, they will switch to either the next keyframe or the previous keyframe. So rather than scrub around and look for that next that keyframe that you set, you just click on one of them and you'll go to the next keyframe sequentially. So consecutively, however you want to call it, I don't know the exact term.
as you can see I'm not really bothering to line it up properly or I can't really is this is just quick and dirty right and now once you've done that it comes out okay and you're like ooh yay if, if you look where the, where the screen is on the right hand side before the bottom you see kind of like a film camera button if you click that basically all it does is it kind of renders this kind of I'd, you could say it's like a pre-render in After Effects and it'll render it to your desktop or so if you click on desktop and then go to colorizer that's yeah, pre-render you just bring it back in there now what we're going to do here we're going to adjust the color so using the exact same techniques that we did with placing the flash we're going to adjust the color that way effectively making it look like it's affecting its surroundings I know people with Adobe would like make masks and stuff but when you're inside you could kind of get away with it especially in an enclosed atmosphere and with the sound effects and the flash it kind of actually looks okay it's not too bad I am at a certain point in the future going to make a tutorial which involves just masking out little bits and using them but that's when I really can't be bothered I'll probably end up actually using wax for that because wax is a lot better So you render that out just as you rendered the original animation clip. As you can see it just renders out. Now you go back to your desktop, you can see it's there. Uh, click on editing. And you drag it into the editing software. then what you've got to do is create three new tracks because we've got three gunshots so but before I do that what I actually found with Sharka is it's really hard to place stuff because when you move around in the timeline and then you decide to move a clip it moves the timeline so you forget you lose the position that you're at and there's no way of placing markers so the easiest way I found is to scrub through your frame until the point that you need to and then actually split your original clip because if you don't move it, no one will actually realize that obviously it's split, it'll just carry on as normal. However, because it's split visually in the timeline, you'll have an indication of where to line it up. So you'll see it's quite it's the easiest way to do it in something like Jashaka. he's doing that. Some people can argue that you can actually put the clip on here and you can do it like that. For some reason the minimum duration of a clip of a PNG on here would be two seconds which is, I mean two frames rather than one frame which obviously is not ideal so you wouldn't do that. So as you can see now I add on three tracks and then onto each track I add on a new sound for my gunshot. So as you can see, just move it in and then just line it up. Usually it does slap it, snap into place, but depends on how it's feeling. You have to remember to select the track that you want to add it to, otherwise it'll just add it onto the previous track and then gives you more headaches than anything else. Then if you go to the top green parts of the green, you can actually adjust the length of each track, so the music and whatnot. Um, it's really hard to, it's really fiddly, you have to have a really powerful computer and this and that. So what I'm actually going to do is uh, just split them because I can't be bothered. It's easier to do it that way. So to split it you just click on S on your keyboard and it splits the clip. And then once you, s I'm going to delete them, and what it does is it resizes, you could say your composition, your project, to that new size. And there we go. So again, just like with the previous modules, in the bottom right hand corner you have a, a camera sign. 
if you click on that now, what it will actually do is rather than import it back to desktop, it will actually let you export it out of the program. And you can do it in a variety of formats depending on what codecs you've got installed and in a variety of resolutions. You again, it's just like saving a Word file. You just choose where you want to save and click on save and it will save it out. And that's pretty much it. If you want to look at the GIMP tutorial, that